the typical entrepreneur gets a great idea, asks for some feedback from maybe a few friends and family, and then they begin to focus everything on developing the perfect product or maybe getting the perfect patent. The more technical you are, for example, if you're an engineer, then I find even the more focused you are on development because that's where you feel the most comfortable. However, I advise you to start with what isn't the most comfortable for you because that's likely where your biggest challenges lie. Let's discuss the three biggest mistakes that I see so many hardware entrepreneurs make and what you should do instead. The first mistake is failing to properly validate your product idea with real customers. Yes, I said real customers, not friends or family. You need to picture pitch your product idea to total strangers who are in the right market for your product. Unless you plan to sell your product to yourself, then you absolutely must validate that there's a market that you can reach that's willing to pay for your solution. Entrepreneurs tend to make way too many assumptions and which almost always prove incorrect. Just because you and your family think your product is genius and sure to be a home run, that doesn't mean that there's a large market of customers who will want the solution enough to pay for it. There are various ways to validate that there's a, a market for your product, but they all depend on talking with strangers who are potential customers. This can be done in person, on the phone, or even online. Facebook ads can be one good option to drive a lot of potential customers to your product offer. But be sure you always have open-ended conversations with your potential customers too. Although I do believe that Facebook ads can be a great way to collect some larger market data, nothing can ever replace the value of open-ended conversations with your potential customers. You want to get their out-of-the-box feedback that gives you new insight into your potential market that maybe you hadn't considered before, and that's impossible to collect outside of open-ended conversations. Of course, you can't collect nearly as many data points with one-to-one -one interviews, so both methods are good to pursue simultaneously. Just be sure that you're collecting the email addresses from anyone that expresses any interest so you can reach out to them to initiate an open-ended dialogue later. Although dreaded by many entrepreneurs, I can guarantee you that talking with your customers will be one of the most valuable things that you can do with your time. Humans, you know, we're, we're complex and difficult to predict. So don't make assumptions. Instead, actually talk to real human customers. Mistake number two is waiting too long to begin marketing. Most entrepreneurs tend to delay and undervalue marketing. Instead, they focus everything on product development, thinking that they'll worry about marketing after they have the product completed. That is a huge mistake. Instead, you need to begin marketing from day one, and it should ideally be done simultaneously with the product development. Marketing and building an audience of potential customers is a long, slow process, so you need to start as early as possible. The earlier you start, the better, partially because your marketing and the associated customer feedback can be critical in helping you shape your final product offering. Don't hide away in a cave while you build your product, thinking if you just build it, they will come. Doing this will likely lead to you building something that no one wants. Sorry. You need to instead build your product with your customers. That's the recipe for success. Ideally, you should build your market audience first and then build the products desired by that market. By starting marketing early and building your audience, you not only get valuable customer feedback, but you have an audience of people excited to buy your product once it's available. Nothing gets people more excited for something new than feeling like they were involved in the creation of it, or they were at least following along during the creation. Either way, they're excited and ready to buy whenever your product is ready. Mistake number three is making your product too complex. Until you've gone through the full cycle of product development and bringing a product to market, it's impossible to have a realistic appreciation for how complex this whole process is. And that's with a relatively simple product. If you're developing a really complex product, then you've increased everything. You've increased your development cost. You've increased your development time and how long it takes you to get your product to market. 
not to mention you've increased the manufacturing cost. Also, you've increased your risk because developing a more complex product has a lot more risk than developing a simpler version of that product. But most importantly, you've increased your odds of failure. Save the super complicated products for the really big companies that have teams of engineers and millions of dollars to spend on development. That's what it takes to develop an extremely complicated product, such as a smartphone. There's no way for a solo startup founder with limited resources to compete with companies like Apple that have millions of dollars to, to spend on getting a product developed. Don't neglect to spend the time up front to simplify your product. Understand the core needs of your customer and the relative technical complexity of every desired feature. Product simplification is an important aspect of the minimum viable product concept or just MVP. You want to make your product as simple as possible while still solving your customer's core problem. You can always add complexity and solve their secondary problems later, but only after the simplified original version of your product is a proven success. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this video next.